Welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna bring you through my secrets on my form when it comes to chest today. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do chest, everything I'm doing, my mindset, my technique, everything on how I approach doing any type of chest pressing movement. So let's just really just jump into it, okay? Okay. So I know I've done a bunch of videos before on chest techniques and form and whatnot, but I thought I'd just have a very like in-depth kind of like coaching session with you guys, like as, as if I was doing like a seminar and you were right there with me. So Erica behind the camera is gonna act like your eyes and what would your eyes do? So as if you were here, you'd be able to see everything that I'm doing and what I'm gonna go over. So number one, however you train chest, I know there's a bunch of different ways you can do chest. There's, a, there's some very fundamental, proper, optimal ways to actually do chest in terms of like your body posture and um, activation and whatnot. And then there's other people's spin on things based on what they've done in the past or even just their entire like body structure. For me, it's gonna come from a powerlifting standpoint, a strength standpoint in terms of like training functionally, and then a bodybuilding like hypertrophy standpoint. On top of that, I've had shoulder injuries. So I tore a, like 20 years ago, it's crazy. I hit my shoulder in football and tore my shoulder. 20 years ago, I was hitting a game and my shoulder went bloop, pop right out my AC, and then I end up playing like I, funny thing is my core my uh, running back one of the other running backs quit that game and I had to play the entire game like this so shoulder was f for a bit so now it was a um, two second degree um, AC tear or whatever and whenever I do chest or triceps my scap on this side eventually does this so I'll be you guys wonder why my tricep is my arms are bigger on one side or another it's because of that literally before then, I was equal on both sides. Now this is a little bigger, this one, because neurologic and whatnot, my tricep isn't as big as this arm, and my bicep is almost as big. If you look at the biggest difference, it is my tricep. Anyway, so after a while when I'm pressing, when I start getting fatigued, I get fatigued in my, in my scap, and my traps start taking over. So when I'm talking about depressing your shoulder and everything like that, I'm doing this from a point of, if you have shoulder injuries or whatever it is, my technique is solely based on making sure that I can keep my shoulders depressed this entire time, and then how do I do that successfully to make sure that I can press? So when I'm pressing, and for the most part, when people start their setup, whatever, if they're a power lifter, most of the time they might kind of put their legs like this, you know, get themselves back like this, and you know, sometimes if you touch the ground, sometimes they're not. They could be like lifted, or like mine are short, but either way you have this like, you're basically cut like this, and then you're catching yourself here. Some people will sit, grab here, get their feet here and then slide themselves under like this and then press. Others will go the other way first, so tuck their feet here, then reach back and do this and then like re realign themselves again. I will do something in between that. I'll have my feet, you know, I'll know where I'm at basically when I sit down. I've always coached this before, it's like, you know, having your feet underneath your heels, like your heels, sorry, underneath your knees, right? A level of that to create some type of um, leverage so your butt doesn't come off the ground. So when I'm here right away, I'll get to my spot and then I'll get down and I'll align myself. And again, we're just gonna do this on the Smith machine because I'm gonna transfer over to um, free weight after. But when I'm here, I get myself in alignment, right? If I'm on a Smith, then I can press to see like, okay, I'm too short. So I'll line myself back up and then I'll readjust my feet after. So I'll realign my feet here. So once I've got myself in place, I'll realign my feet, and then I'll kind of tuck myself in a bit from here. This is where my feet are trying to go. I'm immediately thinking this, right? Extending my feet here, but I'm not necessarily extending them this way. I'm trying to push them into the floor. So you see my quads kind of do this, and then my butt kind of does this, right? This is what I'm trying to base myself in this place, in this point here. Then when I have myself aligned with my hands, I'll adjust my shoulders and I'll push them down. I'll basically, I'll be like this. And it'll create a, an arch, natural arch. I get my shoulder blades underneath, so I'll try and pinch the middle of my trap, my lats, of my traps. So in the middle of my back, not 
up here because again, I need to make sure I can do as much as I can to keep my shoulders down this entire time. So if I try to pinch my, the middle of my traps, not my upper traps, but the middle of my traps, like almost like if someone put a hole through my sternum, like, like right in my solar plex. So right here, a part of my chest, if someone put a hole, or not a hole, someone just drove a stake down by, right down the middle here, to the back, straight through, that's where I'm pinching here. So think about pinching here, not up here, because then it's gonna create you to almost shoulder elevate. Now, if I do that, I kinda do this little rock thing I used to teach back in the day is, when I do that, I can't, I can roll, but I, I really can't necessarily roll. If I roll my shoulders, then I can roll. But if I pinch that little part of my back right through here, say right at the bottom of my rib cage, and pinched, that creates this nice little, like I'll call it a little table almost. A flat base that's on another flat base. And, it's, and then there you're basically based. <laughs> you had a good base, foundation. So now when I'm pressing from, from here, I'll unrack. What I'm, and I'm gonna put more weight on so you can see what I'm doing, but when this is coming down, for the most part, when people ride in the negative, they're just thinking like this and trying to really hold it up with their chest and then, you know, pressing up. For me, adjust myself again. For me, what I'm doing is, when this is coming down this way, I'm pushing against it on the way down. So what I mean by that is, when the weight's coming down, my, remember, my chest is gonna be here, my feet are be planted, and I'm pushing here, right? I'm pushing into the floor, and it's kind of making my body almost push this way, right? Now, if I do, if I keep myself loose and just push my legs, I'm just gonna go this way. If I get tight from here, push my legs, and then tighten my glutes, I stick. It's almost like it pushes myself down here, right? So I'm basically pushing from my heels, I mean from my toes. If I had a higher base, I put my foot and tie on the, on the floor. But from here, I'm pushing into the ground, and I'd be doing the same thing if I was here a little taller. I'd be pushing into the ground. And then I'm squeezing my glutes, basically like almost like pushing, putting pressure right here, and then that the middle part of my back. There's my points, one, two, three. And then on the way down, this, when I'm riding the weight down, I'm pushing into the floor while the weight's coming down, right? I'm not just loose here and then just trying to pull my chest up my leg is sitting here, I'm pressing into the floor. That helps me control the weight down and isolate my, my chest. And it helps me keep my shoulders down the entire time, right? So I'm putting pressure from here, here, and then my shoulder blades from here. So that, that point of contact, when I'm lowering the weight, my shoulders stay down. And when I'm pressing back up. I have like the same setup every single time. When the weight's coming down, I'm literally pushing into the floor. When the weight's coming down. So when I'm eccentrically loading on the way through, pushing in the floor allows me to ride down and my chest to take all of the weight on my chest and then pushing up. And then having that point where my sternum basically in the middle, I'm pinching there. It keeps my shoulders down the entire time. Especially when you're doing flat bench. The problem is, is like, sometimes we get to this point and that happens a lot. The big mistake for doing flat, which is hard for some people, especially like myself, is if you're not careful, this ends up happening and riding up here and then we get this thing here. Yeah, we're still based and we're still strong, but we're basically in our neck. And for me, I can't be there. I need to be here. So pushing the floor on the way down and then expanding my chest and then pushing myself into the floor. I want to think I'm doing for you beginners out there or anyone who's just, you know, been doing it for years or whatever. Think of pressing like this. In my head, when I'm pressing, I'm not thinking about press the weight off my chest. I'm thinking about push myself away or into the floor. And you can see the difference of my posture when I press weight off my chest or push the weight back. It's almost like this isn't really even moving. I'm pushing myself into the floor. 
That's where my head is, is always here. And it's come, it goes back to football because when you're you know, blocking, you're grounded in your base and you're doing this. So you're strong from here when you're blocking. And the same kind of pressing you're doing from a flat bench. So how does this translate over to incline barbell? Now let's talk about your training program. Based on progressive overload and advanced training philosophies, I'll create a program that perfectly aligns with you, your goals, supplying you with everything you need to be successful. This is more than just a training and nutrition program. It's a pathway to transform your body and health with a program personally for you. Well, for incline barbell, it's a little easier to keep your shoulders down because gravity being up a little bit, and this is only on a 15 degree incline, but what, what it's gonna do is, it's putting yourself on a little bit of an angle. Naturally, the weight uh, that you're holding is gonna push your shoulders down naturally. That's why I like doing 15 degree. Um, it's easier to keep your shoulders down for me. My incline is, is stronger than my flat. It always has been. From this standpoint, the same thing. And that same tip I gave you on the ground, um, when I uh, talking about pushing your feet into the ground, it transfers over to free weight so much more because it keeps you even more based, stable and based. These base is good. It's good foundation. A good base. That's a that's a that's a good athlete. A base. A good. Back in my day, base, based. Anyway, I want to be like the cool kids still. I got to talk to the young kids. Based. I know when to use. I know when to use base. If you're watching this video and you don't know what I'm talking about, what base I'm trying to use when you're watching, I don't know, is he trying to say he's just, he just mad chill with what he's saying or is he, is he talking about a foundation? It's like, I'm talking about the foundation and I'm pretty mad chill with what I'm saying. I'm just based. I'm based in my base. Talking about chest. Base. When I'm holding free weights, barbells, dumbbells, Especially an incline, it's easy to keep your shoulders down. But again, from here, this is where the biggest problem is. It's always, always making jokes about like tap dancing. If I sat like this, if I'm doing this, right, I'll hold it like this. If I take one hand out, you see that I'm trying, I'm falling off, right? Right, I can sit here and just push from here. And I'm good, I'm perfectly fine, right? I'm good, I'm real good. Now, if I take my foot off like this and try and press, I'm tipping over. Now, the difference is, is there's more of a, you know, there's more of a surface of my back being on the bench, so you don't really see that much, but it's the same thing. If I'm sitting here and I'm benching and my foot comes off the ground, or I'm kind of like tap dancing or I'm moving my feet, all this stability comes, it basically goes from one to the side to the next, depending on what you're doing. So what I'm pushing, so when you're looking at like doing a, you know, if you're trying to really have a better mind and muscle connection in your chest, it's feeling the negative coming down. You can't feel the negative as much when you're not balanced and you're kind of doing this kind of stuff and we're focusing on other things instead of just being able to be completely firm from the base, from the ground, all the way up from floor to core. When I'm here, it's the same ideas. I want to keep my feet, my feet on the ground. They can touch the lower bench, which is great. So I'm gonna pull my feet back a bit, and then I'm strong from here. Right away, I'm on the ground, pushing into the floor. Like, just, like you can see, I'm just kind of doing this and tipping up this way. Now, I didn't really set this thing up as high as I should have, but whatever. Now, when this thing's off, I'll give you an idea. From here, right, I'm still pitching that same positioning as before. My feet are driven to the floor, into the ground. My glutes are clenched basically, and then my, shoulder, my shoulders are flat on the bench. On the way down, I can ride this thing as much as I can because while I'm letting it come down, I'm pushing into my quads as well too. The best way that you can keep yourself balanced this way is gonna come from the ground, from floor to core all the way up. Because now, right now, I have 135 pounds on top of me right now, plus my weight. Right, so from here up, I have a lot more going on than here down. If I take my feet off the ground, this thing gets way heavier and less stable. If I'm driving into the floor, I have stronger legs, quads than I do have shoulders and chest. So if I'm pushing into the floor as well as clenching my glutes, when I'm pressing, this weight is gonna feel a little lighter because I'm basically floating on the way down 
and transferring my weight to be even. So now that I'm pressing from here, the amount of pressing I'm doing to the floor, and I'm not saying pressing the ground so your legs are tired, but just enough that you, you're active and you can feel yourself completely balanced and pressing. And then when the weight's coming down, I'm pressing through my legs, take a deep breath in, and then I'm pushing even more through my legs on the way up. So I'm simultaneously pressing from the legs and pressing from the glutes and the quads. So it's like a little bit of a mixture of like, I would say a power lifter and just like, and, and someone just training to have a bigger chest. But the thing is, what I want you to understand is your goal is to do what you can in terms of what I said to make sure that you can continue to keep this posture the entire time. And when you take your feet off the ground and you're not pushing from the floor, you end up having your shoulders do this and this, and then to your up here and pressing from here. And this happens all of the time. So you want to be here the entire time. Again, if I can drive like a pole through here, if I was like, like this, it's right through. It's not, it's not here, like the top of me in here. So you have this thing, because that happens when you pinch up here or even taller here. I want to pinch through the middle of my, of my chest or my solar plex. And I'm here. And that's what keeps your shoulders down and then engaging your lats, right, while you do it. And that's something you kind of have to work on is really getting, focusing on your lats, being able to um, brace even more, right? I'm still like this. If I do it again, if I take my hand like this and try and lift my chest to my hand, I'm naturally gonna, I'm naturally gonna do that. Now when I'm here, I want my lats to be engaged when I'm pressing so I'm stable from the chest and then I'll see stable from the ground. Last but not least, floor decor. I want you to think of when you're lifting, the points of contact. So we've already talked points of contact being from the feet, kind of pushing. Well, if I was just leaning like this, right? Having the same like torso angle as my shin bone, I'd be doing this. But instead, I'm sitting back this way, but I'm still pressing into the floor. All right, so I'm still pushing from here. There's your point of contact. We can say one point or just two because you have two feet. But I want you to think two because we're gonna match those with our hands as well too. So when I'm here, my feet are on the ground, I'm conscious of grounding myself, being stable from the floor, getting myself back. Once you've aligned yourself, obviously, again, just do a little bit of adjustment. Start kind of pressing yourself in the floor, like keep yourself like, you know, active. We don't have to squeeze all hell like you're doing a leg press, but just enough that they're on right now. Like you tell where right here is not on, right here is on. Here is not on, here is on. Right, I don't have to do this. I'm just from here, I'm pressing from here, that's it. Now once I've got myself positioned, my, sh my shoulders are back, again, my chest is coming up from here, and I got my hands where they should be. I've unracked the bar, I've set myself up again. On the way down, I'm thinking. My feet are pushing into the floor, and I'm feeling the pressure in my hands from the bar. And while I lower it, I'm feeling the same amount of pressure from the floor and in my hands and pressing. Now I would recommend doing this on the Sith machine. Do it with incline, flat bench, or incline, whatever. And just practice feeling, you know, getting yourself in position, having your feet pressing the floor, feeling your feet pressing the ground, as well as the weight coming down on your hands and your chest staying up in that positioning and then pressing and just keeping that posture. Get in the Sith machine, do that, do it, start really slow. The lighter weight doesn't have to be heavy, like crazy, it has to be heavy enough for you to feel it come down and dropping down and then work on that. And those same cues and tips, you could transfer that right to the dumbbells as well too. So watch this video over and over and over again. Take a few things at a time. Don't try and take this entire video at once. Just a couple things to work on, rewatch it again, and then get better and better. And that's how I then be able to press and control the weight because my entire body is working at it. Now my whole body's not getting tired. It's just working together so I can isolate my chest and my chest can get the most out of the workout instead of my shoulders or my triceps or whatever. That is it for today's video. If you guys like videos like this and want me to do more videos 
in this style, break things down in more in depth, let me know in the comment section below and let me know what exercise you want me to go in depth in terms of form in the comment section below. Anyway guys, till next time you know how it is, Iron Chef is Iron, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.